had a question recently in one of our videos um, where I was asked about bracketing. Um, and I ended up leaving this really long reply to this guy about uh, what bracketing is and why we use it. Um, and I thought, well, probably better than, than that would be just to create a quick video explaining very briefly what bracketing is, but more importantly, um, how I use luminosity masks to create a more natural looking exposure blend um, when I've been using bracketing. Um, Basically, with, with bracketing, the reason we do it is because um, our camera sensors have a limited dynamic range, which means a lot of times, if you've got a high contrast scene, so you're taking a photo of a sunset, for instance, um, and you've got a bright sky and a dark foreground, if you expose for the foreground, you'll end up with the sky being too bright and your highlights will be blown out. Whereas if you expose for the sky, you'll end up with a foreground being too dark. So what we do is we'll take two or three images at different exposures um, and then we'll blend those together um, afterwards in, in post-processing. Um, now, uh, there's various ways of doing that. One technique is to use uh, HDR software, but to be honest, um, Although Lightroom now has a built-in HDR uh, merge feature, which works okay a lot of the time, um, those sort of automatically blended HDR images tend to look pretty awful, to be honest. Um, I'm not a big fan of them, and I don't know many people who are. They tend to look just too artificial. Um, so when I'm blending two different exposures together, um, I tend to use luminosity masks. So I'll dive onto the computer now and just show you what I, what I mean by this. So a luminosity mask is essentially just a black and white version of your image which is used as a mask. So um, just for the sake of demonstration in this video, I'm going to be using um, a plugin called TK Actions, which you can buy for, I think it's about £35. Um, but you don't have to buy plugins like TK Actions. You can actually do this yourself. And I'll show you very briefly how to generate um, a luminosity mask. So. Um, uh, as you can see, see here, what I've got is I've got two images. If I just uh, delete this layer mask I've got set up here, I've got a darker image and I've got a brighter image. If I hide the darker image, which is sitting on top of a brighter image on its own layer, where you, where you see, but there you go. So that's the, um, that's the brighter image. And then this is the darker image. Now, a layer mask is basically, if you click this icon down here um, in the bottom right hand corner, you can create a layer mask. And what this enables you to do is if you paint, let's say black onto that layer mask, you can hide the layer that that layer mask is attached to. So black hides it and white um, shows it. So if I just show you, this is, this is the layer mask itself. As you can see here, we've got black through the middle and white around the edge. And then if I show you how that looks, you can see that it's the white areas of that mask are allowing the layer below to come through. And the white areas are um, still maintaining the, the darker image at the top. So um, what I'll do is I'll just undo what I just did. And let's say, uh, let's say you need to create a layer mask without using a plugin. All you do is you select your, your, your mask layer um, and you go to image and apply image. Click OK. And what that's done now, if I show you the layer mask, you can do that on a Mac by holding down option and clicking the layer mask. What it's done is it's put a black and white version of the image onto the mask layer. So for this mask, basically your black black areas here, these are the dark areas, these will hide the, the layer, whereas the bright areas will show the layer, if that makes sense. So if I now show you the whole image, um, if I disable the layer, layer mask, um, like so, you can see that's that's just the dark image. If I enable it, uh, as you can see there, it's allow it's basically hiding the darker areas, so, that, so that's allowing these 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 bits here to come through, and it's and it's showing these is brighter areas. So using a layer mask like that, so, so a luminosity mask like that is very useful. Um, but when I'm doing an exposure blend, uh, let's say um, I want a li little bit more of that sky in. So let's just switch over to a white paintbrush and come in here and I can start painting in more of that darker area. Um, let's increase the brush size a bit. And as you can see, what you can do is you can start to bring more of that in. This is the darker area, and it just helps to bring that sky in a bit more. And what you want to avoid is areas like this where there's a bit of a bright 
area of area, you can see where it's been merged. And essentially, what I've done now is brought in the darker exposure and the brighter exposure, and it's basically looking a lot more natural. If I show you the actual mask that we've applied here, that's the mask. And as you can see, because it's got this black and white image, it's actually just made that look an, an awful lot more natural um, as, as an exposure. So that's, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is um, to actually use the, the uh, luminosity mask as a stencil. So let's create uh, a new mask on, on this um, darker layer. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, invert that, so it's now become a black mask, so it's hiding that top layer. And what I want to do is start to bring in some of this layer by painting white. So what I'll do using TK Actions is I'll switch, is I'll, I'll generate a luminosity mask again. Um, this time I'm just going to increase the contrast of that um, luminosity mask a little bit. Like so. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that layer mask by clicking select and I'll just hide those marching ants and now what that's, that luminosity mask is doing is acting as a stencil. So if I start painting white, um, if I will just show you briefly what this does by on the actual layer mask, if I start painting white now on here you can see it actually paints in the black and white version of the image, the luminosity mask. Um, I don't want to do it quite as dramatically as that but we'll switch back to here and what I'll start to do, oops, control Z, um, make sure you've got your layer mask selected. If I now start to paint in that top layer, you can see that it actually quite naturally allows you to blend in your brighter exposure. Just decrease the brush size a little, let's make sure um, start going like this, so you can just start painting that in and as you can see around these rocks because it's acting as a stencil because you've got that luminosity mask selected I can go over the edge of those rocks and it's not going to look too artificial as if I didn't have that selected you'd end up with dark areas in the rocks um, and you just get around that little bit of that little trick point there too and that's it and as you can see it's a way of very naturally bringing in the darker exposure. And normally there's much more that I would do to this image. Let's say if I deselect that, I could start to bring in, say, if I drop the opacity down, I'm going to start to bring in some more of these clouds here. Let's take a little bit more care over this than I'm doing now, because I'm just doing this quickly from the point of view of um, demonstration, but just help, you can just use it sort of locally like that. Oh, that's probably a bit too far, but let's just say, um, let's just bring in some of these clouds a little bit more. Here we go. And it just, uh, well, we've got a few little halos on there which I don't want, but um, that, for the purpose of a quick demonstration, I think is probably about it. Um, I'll just down a little bit more, and I just, there's maybe a little bit of haze on here, but as you can see, you can, you can play around, and it just, Sometimes it takes a little bit of fiddling just to get it looking looking right and looking natural. But now we have um, uh, a blended image, which I think looks a little bit more natural than an HDR image. Um, so anyway, I hope you found that useful. It was a really quick little whistle-stop tour of how to use luminosity masks um, for blending images. Um, but um, if you found it useful, then please leave some comments below. Happy to hear your comments. Um, and uh, if you did like this video, then do consider subscribing. Um, take care, and we'll see you next time.